I'm Tansy Brooke, the Senior Director of ERP Innovation Product Marketing at Oracle. And today I'm joined by Sanjay Siegel, a partner at KPMG. Well, I'm excited to be speaking with you today. Same here. So the last couple of years have been very interesting to say the least. Um, can you just let me know what has been sort of the general experience from a C CFO point of view? You know, it's interesting. The last few years, like you said, have just transformed everything. The way we do things normally, right? If you think about it, three years ago, would we have actually thought about buying groceries online, having you know, someone picking out your own produce and actually shipping it to your house, right? I mean, so we've transformed quite a bit. And when you look at finance organizations, they had to go remote 100% three years ago, closing the books remotely, doing everything not on site. So we've disrupted everything. And what, what happened through that disruption is finance had to think of new ways to work. And they've been reinventing themselves along the way to think about new ways of working. How have you seen things evolve in the last couple of years for the finance function? Can you do a little bit of level setting as to where we're at? Yeah, I mean, finance is, uh, it's been on a treadmill like they've been crisis after crisis trying to deal with these crises. And, and, and it's been the hardest thing that I've watched my friends and colleagues that are out there in finance professionals because you're dealing with an environment that's constantly changing, right? From COVID where businesses stopped right, getting revenue and you still had to kind of pay the, pay the bills uh, at the end of the day too. You get to a now an environment where supply chain's backed up, you can't get product in, but yet every customer wants something. I mean, how many times have you gone to the store or looked for a new car lately and you can't find right where you're at? So for the finance organizations that are still trying to develop that future state vision of more digital capabilities, they're probably working harder for the folks that were a little bit further ahead and thinking about how they got digitized, they're actually probably in a better spot because maybe they've automated that mundane work and they're focused more on strategic elements to support the business. But regardless, CEOs, boards are all looking to the finance organization to help them think through what are we doing from a shareholder perspective? What are we doing for margins? What are we doing right for cash and how are we handling that? And that's where finance is spending a lot of time helping. This has been incredibly challenging. Uh, but in many ways, there's also an opportunity here to rethink um, how we do finance and, and uh, just put a different lens or a different point of view on, on what the responsibility and also what the capabilities are for CFOs. Like in some ways, I feel like it can be seen as a very empowering time where they can get involved in really supporting the business in a meaningful way. First of all, finance is just dealing with the day to day. I mean, in the current environment, they've got to take care of business as they can. But at the same time, they have to think of the North Star. I had uh, dinner with the CFO uh, just recently, a large consumer products company. And he said, Sanjay, hey, listen, we're about to embark on this finance Oracle transformation. So Oracle Cloud Platform and a finance transformation. And he said, but here's the problem. I'm not sleeping at night. I said, well, what's the issue? He goes, look, we're dealing with supply chain issues like no tomorrow. Our costs are going higher than ever. And he said, should I go and invest all this money but what he said to me really resonated. He said, Sanjay, this is the time for me to invest because when we come out of this, we're gonna see large growth. We're gonna see an, a great opportunity, right? For us to go to the next level. And he said, you know what? I'm gonna do this as a legacy. So when I look at CFOs and I get, a, I get to meet a lot of CFOs in the, you know, out in the marketplace, I think there's a good playbook they've put together. There's kind of four key areas that they focus in on. One is around strategically, how do they support their organization and driving the strategy of it. Two is digital, three is data and analytics, and the fourth is really all about talent. And I think when you put all these together, that playbook is really how finance is actually moving forward. I think even consumers who may have not been aware of the importance of supply chain, it's now very personal and very close to home for everyone. How are we having to rethink um, how we approach supply chain um, from how we had in the past? So finance is really stepping up at the table to be a partner with supply chain and helping them think through it, whether it's better visibility planning, right? So better understanding across the board of where our product is, how do we get product into uh, our, you know, our warehouses or in our customers' hands. But the other angle is on the analytics side, cost, better understanding of the cost so that they can think through pricing, right? I mean, if you think about it, we're seeing inflation. So material costs are going up, supply chain costs to transform those materials are going up. Well, the CFOs are sitting on the forefront working with the business partners to say, hey, how do we actually make sure we recoup our margins in some creative way? So in this world right now that we're dealing with supply chain, right, they're at least doing a better job of helping us navigate that through better visibility, better analytics, that financial acumen to really make sure that they're managing the margins for the organization. 
obviously talent is top of mind right now um, with the great resignation, with employees um, really looking for more, more meaning and for uh, more inspiration within their jobs, especially at this time. I think there's, there's a lot of reflection that people are having in terms of why is it important to have work that's meaningful to you and a place where you feel appreciated and a place where you can be engaged. Yep. On the employee side, what are you seeing in terms of how the exploit experience has changed? How are CFOs thinking about it? 90% of the time I'm talking to CFOs, the first topic that comes out of mind is talent. It's how do I recruit diverse talent? How do I retain my talent? How do we train and engage our, our, our people, right? And at the end of the day, I think you said it well, right? We're reinventing the way we work. So if we can automate the mundane work, right, and we can get finance focused on more of the strategic work, helping the organization make better business decisions, helping them with the innovative new tools like machine learning, right, or artificial intelligence or robotics or cloud computing, right? I mean, we can actually inspire them. You've got all these great finance professionals. They're trying to figure out, do we work from home or do we work in the office? And if I work from the office or work from home, I need to be able to do work that's meaningful. So they're trying to think about how do we get them trained? How do we keep them excited in the environment? I'm watching a lot of my clients change their profile of looking for resources. Long gone are the days of just traditional accounting skills. We need folks that can tell stories. We're training finance professionals way different in colleges now. And when they come out of it, right, and they come into your organization, they want to be in a finance organization that's future-proof and future-ready. And that means being more innovative, more excited to be a part of a business partnering environment. And I think that's the thing that's happening at the most right now for most of the finance and CFOs. ESG is becoming a really important topic for CFOs as well. I think traditionally, you know, diversity and equity inclusion was maybe a subject that sat mostly in the HR function. Um, sustainability relating to things like climate change sat in, um, in, in the supply chain function. Increasingly, we're seeing CFOs being called to integrate these topics more significantly into the DNA of the business. So it's not just sitting in one line of business or another. It's like, how do we really integrate this into our culture and all the way down to our financials? How do we make these business decisions? DNI is such a critical aspect of an organization's fabric, right? I mean, we need diverse thinking. We have to be inclusive. I think we found, at least in consulting at KPG, when we bring the best and brightest together to help solve a problem, we truly out achieve uh, the results that we anticipate for our clients. From the board down, they've been tasking the CEO to say, look, we want to see your plans for ESG. We understand that. I think what's nice about the CFO and the finance function is they have a good span of control across the organization can understand it. First of all, they can start to knit together the marketing, the supply chain. But the hardest part for them, I think, right now is compliance and reporting. So we've always owned compliance and reporting. If you think back to even the Sarbanes-Oxley days, SOX was always is, is, is still a finance thing. And now from a sustainability perspective, they're trying to figure out how do we report? Standards aren't officially out there. I think the IFRS is about to publish some standard types of reporting and elements. We also are working with them on a, a daily basis, the regulators to help them understand, okay, how do we consistently ad, you know, manage uh, the metrics organization to organization for ESG? And so that's kind of where I think finance is really starting to step up is ensuring that we've got standards, we've got the right messaging. How do we actually represent our organization to the public world around ESG? We want to make sure that we have the right information sets that are trusted. And so finance is actually sitting at the table for that. I think the world of finance mostly existed in what could we measure? If we can't measure it, then how are we going to make decisions on it? Um, and I think with things like ESG, it's really tricky because a lot of these things are intangible. They're very difficult to measure, um, but they're also incredibly important. Um, I think one of the things that's positive is it seems like using emerging technology, we're able to measure and able to sort of see the direct impact um, much better than we have in the past. Um, but I know this is still a significant challenge for CFOs trying to figure out how do we make the decisions and how do we take action on things that don't fit in sort of our traditional Box. What we believe as we go forward, and I'm proving this out at many clients, is if we take a lot of this data that sits out externally, and I talked about this, right? It could be carbon footprint, it could be um, you know, inflation data, it could be housing starts, weather patterns, whatever you want to talk. You take all of that external data, ingest it internally, and taking all of that data put together, and then leveraging artificial intelligence to create these basically relationships, then out of that, it starts to come unique hypotheses and ideas. Now, with all this data and everything, we should be able to have the insights at our fingertips with a hypothesis. Imagine coming in, you wake up in the morning and this automated 
you know, Amazon Alexa device tells you essentially, look, this is what you should be thinking about. We're seeing inflation trends here. We might want to increase price by 2% here to help Nick. I mean, and so all of a sudden, your point is, right, we got all this data, but we've never been able to knit it together to make better decisions. And now this power of this computing that's sitting behind us is giving us that chance. And I'm telling you right now, I think the next five to 10 years in finance, in this space around analytics and insights is gonna be amazing. We have, in some ways, a bird's eye view, um, but also a very intimate view mm -hmm. of what customers are doing in many industries. Can you give me some examples of some of the conversations that you've had with customers lately? They come with a basic problem. I got an old ERP platform, I need to modernize that platform, I need to upgrade. Okay, well, I get that, but let me just step back. You're the CFO, what do you vision your future to be? Do you wanna have different finance professionals sitting at the table? How are you gonna actually get them excited? What tool sets should we put together to help create a much better environment? We're watching them start to really think, gosh, we need to probably think broader, right? HR platforms, right? Everybody's saying, well, let's go put a new HR platform. Well, it's really about employee experience. We want to create a much better employee experience for us, right? And so it's funny, but I think most of our companies are trying to think about experience-based transformations, better customer experience, better employee experience, better professional experience. How do we transform our businesses? Obviously, customer centricity is really important for businesses. And I think it's become even more difficult to deliver a customer-centric experience in the last couple of years. How are you seeing companies use technology to really step up and help provide a good customer experience? We have a point of view around we call connected, connected customer. And really it's around a connected point of view that talks about how do we want to engage with our customers in a digital way? What kind of tool sets and techniques do we want to engage uh, with to ensure our customers getting the experience they want, right? Whether it's retail, whether it's buying a new car, right? Ultimately, we don't need to think about the traditional ways. And so a lot of our clients right now are rethinking that process. And when you think about it, it's all embedded on experience based with technology behind it. The front end is all about, right? How do we engage with the it's got to be a really fun way for you to be experiencing that environment. And then behind it is a host of technologies required to support it. And so this connected framework that we built helps connect the front office we call to the middle, to the back in a seamless digital way. If there was ever a group of people that I think of as unflappable, it's probably CFOs. Like you think of <laughs> CFOs as like, you know, the, the calm and the storm to yep. a certain extent. And um, in the last couple of years, they've had a heck of a storm. The finance teams and CFOs in particular, they can really make a difference at this time. Like they really are at a place where they can make a significant impact. And, and even conversations I've had with CFOs over the last couple of years that are our customers, many of them felt, you know, moral obligations and felt sort of, you know, called on to help keep the businesses going, to help keep society running as best as possible. How are they thinking about everything that, that we've been going through for the past couple of years? Imagine if you've got, you know, we've had major take cruise ships. Cruise lines went from sailing to actually stopping. No revenue coming in the door and you're sitting on these large assets. That fell squarely in the lap of the CFO and the finance organization. How do we actually refinance? How are we going to pay people? How are we going to, to your point, continue to keep our employees happy, but at the same time, we'll get no revenue coming in. That's immense pressure. But I think what's interesting is they've navigated through that, right? And they've actually remained calm through all of it. And that's why I think coming out of this, you're, you see finance a much more stronger partner to the business. They have proven themselves that we can help you navigate through these rough waters and actually get to a, a, a better spot. And look, here we are again, year, three years later out of this, this, this crazy world. And yet we have another set of situational elements that we're dealing with, which are causing finance to go yet again back to how do we handle this and how do we want to deal with this on a global basis. Sanjay, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing all of your amazing insights. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as well.